Knock on. Uh, okay, we have one incarnation. Have all of those spirits that are connected with us also had one incarnation in the physical? Yes. This will be the only physical that we have? No. <laughs> okay. Reincarnation is possible, but not in the way that it's described by any Eastern or, Hin or, or, or Buddhist philosophies. Reincarnation is only possible, when I, and I've described it in the DVDs, when you get to the 22nd sphere state, right. then reincarnation is possible. But you won't come back for the purpose of karma. You come back because you love people and you want to help them experience those things you've experienced. So many of you may decide in the future to reincarnate. Right? Many of you may decide that you never want to reincarnate again. Right? But you will never even get into the state where that's possible until you get to the 22nd sphere condition. So, but we, do we have other lives that are called something other than reincarnating? And every spirit who's ever progressed through the spheres treats each sphere as a different life. Okay. So, if I can illustrate that, if you're in the first sphere and you have a heap of mates with you in the first sphere, right? And then all of a sudden, one of your mates grows in love and he goes to the second sphere, his body, his material body, that his spirit body looks like it's dissolved. And from all intensive purposes, you will look at the body and think that the body has disappeared. In reality, the body has entered a new state. The spirit body has entered a new state of vibration, which is why we use the term vibration in metaphysics, right? And the spirit body has entered a new state of love, which is a new vibrational state. And it's like it disappears from that sphere. Okay. And so people in that sphere can no longer see that body. And so they think that the person's returned to earth. But in reality, they've actually progressed up to the next sphere. Mm -hmm. All right? You follow me? Like, does that, yeah. everyone understand what yeah. I was saying there? Yeah. Yeah. So, so, so let me draw it. it might be understandable if I draw it. Here's the spheres of the spirit world. So one, two, three. Remember, they are separated by interstellar boundaries, but these yeah. boundaries are boundaries of love. Right? Yeah. Does that make sense? So the interstellar boundaries, which are huge gulfs of, time, of light, light, light years in, in distance, are actually boundaries separated by love, different vibrational areas of love. Now, if I'm in the first sphere with a group of mates, right? So we've all been there and we've all been there kicking around for 20, 30, 40, 50, 100, sometimes 500, 1,000 years even, right? And one of my mates all of a sudden disappears just disappears. What am I going to think? He died. I'm either going to think he died. See, a lot of spirits in this first sphere are still worried about death because they think he might have died. Right? They're worried that he might be now back on earth because I believe in reincarnation, so he must have gone back to earth. Right? So many spirits in the first sphere believe in reincarnation and they believe the person has gone back to earth. Right? But in reality, what happened is because he changed his love condition, he is now in the second sphere. And quite often when I'm talking to spirits, helping them to progress, many of them are ready to progress quite rapidly. And one of the things I try to do is warn them that if they disappear, if, if there's a group of spirits and a heap of them disappear, for the other spirits not to become afraid because they've just gone to a new vibration. What actually happens is most of the spirits left behind, many of them become even more afraid and then they don't want to do anything that locks them in their fear. So what actually is happening is that they are progressing without needing to come back to Earth, and the effect is that this body dissolves or is transformed, if you like, into a new vibrational state. And when it's in this new vibrational state, and this happens with every transition. So if there's 22 of them, it's like having 22 lives, right? 22 different existences. It's just, in fact, one existence of the soul, but it, you've changed. 22 times. Okay. You follow me? Yeah. Yeah. And grown 22 times. I've had an experience of time being simultaneous and it seemed like I saw myself and it seemed like I was seeing myself at the end of time. Yep. Like I looked different but I knew myself. Yep. You're, because time, there is no time in the spirit world, when you are in the soul state, when you are in, there are times in your existence even now when you will feel like connect, a connection with yourself so completely and with your spirit body so completely that it will be almost like time stops still. 
And in those instances, you can actually see in the future, and this is how spirits see in the future and come to tell you about it, they can see in the future what is going to happen based on your decisions that you're making now. Which may change, of course. Remember, with, con with quantum the physics theories, the process of observation changes <coughs> the actual occurrence, right? So, so every time you observe something, it's going to be different the next instant you observe it, depending on the choices you've made in between. Yeah. But does everyone understand what's going on there? Can you see why even the spirits believe in past lives? Because yeah. they actually, many spirits, it's only when they get up to the fourth or fifth spheres they say, oh, I, I can see what's going on now. You know, I'm progressing and I, dis and I, you know, my mates progress and they disappear and then they come back and visit me and I can see them. But it's only once that starts happening regularly that you start realising that that's going on. Right? But if time is simultaneous, it would appear from your point of view that it's past and future, but it, it felt like it was all happening immediately. Yeah. Yeah. <coughs> is there a question in that? Yeah. Well, but there's, there's, I that's a true statement. That's right. <laughs> yeah. 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 Before you rub off the word blocks, yeah. um, you said that. Um, can, can, you, I, yes. can I finish that? Has everyone, is everyone okay with that? No, yeah. I'm not really. No, okay. Tell me. Yep. If, why do they disappear without speaking to the, to the other person? Because they get so engrossed in their life and how much better it is. But that would help if they... Yeah, but a lot of times they don't think of going back. No. How many times have you moved from one place to another place on earth, mm -hmm. had a better life, and never gone back to the original place that you went from? Mm -hmm. And this is exactly how they feel. Like, you don't want to go back because of... Some emotions that were connected with that first place, generally, right? And so, so you know, you imagine if you'd lived here for a hundred years in the hells, and then you slowly progressed up, and then you made this transition. A lot of your memories still here, emotional memories of this location, would be quite negative, would they not? And and you'd lived a hundred years of our time there, right? So it would feel like oh, horrible, right? So would you want to go back at that moment? Now, a lot of times they might progress a bit further and then they realise, yeah, I do want to go back and tell them. But in that time, 20, 30, 40, 50 years of our time on Earth may have, may have happened. You follow me? So for many of them, they don't go back until they start getting on the divine path, because this is natural love path. It's not that I want to go back, it's that I want to tell them I'm leaving. Uh, they, <laughs> a lot of times you don't even know you're leaving. A lot of... And, a lot of times you've grown in love to a certain degree, but you don't know you have until the transition has been made. You but follow me? Well, this is why I'm teaching what I'm teaching, is so that people learn all this on earth, and then right. nobody will have a problem with it, right? <laughs> but the truth is that this is what happens because there's so much ignorance. There's so much ignorance in the first fear. You know when you go to a seance or you go to a, you know, a medium or anything like that to talk to spirits? Most of the time, you know who you're talking to. You're talking to first few spirits, right? Because they're the ones the medium can connect to because she's, she's not dealt with her emotions either, right? And so what's happening is a lot of the information you're getting is true information as it relates to the first sphere. But it's not the truth of the universe. It's only the truth is as it relates to the first sphere. You follow me? So you might think you have a desire to go back, but many don't. And who will you go back to? Will you go back to everyone? There's billions of people there. Will you do that? See, most people don't. What they do is they go back to their friends, talk about it with their friends, and that's, then they go on. No, no, I want to do everything before I leave. I want to just tell them exactly where I'm going. But if you don't know you're making the transition, how do you know that you can do that? You don't even know you're making your own transition. Well, the transition is automatic as soon as you enter a new state of love. And you don't know that that is. See, many people, if they knew, they wouldn't be going through these terrible experiences. They'd already be up here, right? The majority of them would already be very progressed if they knew. The problem is, in the first fear, the majority of people are in ignorance. And so they don't know. And so they don't even know that when they make a transition in love, that they're actually going to go into a new location. And they don't even understand that. So they don't know in advance. Until somebody tells them. Someone there pushing you up. Someone pushing you up. 
You can't be pushed up. It's all to do with love. <laughs> I think that um, if I'm moving, uh, there'll be a guide helping you, but a lot of times, even if, if you're in a first fear state, a lot of times you will not trust anybody. Because you, you think, of it, how many of you have feelings of or emotions inside of you right now where you don't trust what you're hearing from me right now? You see, that's a prevalent emotion, is it not? Mistrust. Right? When, you, when the past opens the first fear, most spirits who are in the first fear don't have, a, have any trust. 